For some reason, I was like already sitting in class and he sat next to me. And I was like, what are you doing? Uh, and he was like, oh yeah, I'm like a software engineer. And I'm like, ah, I really don't like software engineers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think you liked it. <laughs> Welcome to the Alpha Podcast, made possible by West Coast Customs and Neverland Studios, hosted by me, Jussup. Before we begin, I want to remind everybody that what you're about to hear is not financial advice, nor do we endorse any of the guests or projects on the show. This is simply meant for educational purposes, and oftentimes I'm learning about these projects in real time as we're recording them. While this is brought to you by West Coast Customs and Neverland Studios, the opinions expressed are of my own or the guests and not of the companies. So without further ado, let's tap into the episode. All right, we're, we're live. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here with Bartosz. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. So Bartosz, uh, currently at Solana Labs, uh, working on product engineering, primarily with Jordan, Jerry, Larry, a few other folks in Chicago. I started at Solana Labs almost a year and a half ago, and it was an interesting journey. When did you start to get into uh, crypto in this space? Um, seriously, in terms of like work, it was really with Solana. When I was doing my masters, I was mining a bit of Bitcoin. That was like in 2010, but I was never taking it really seriously. So I wasn't counted as getting into it. I was on the sidelines mostly watching. <laughs> So you, your background then is more on development and then it just happened to align with yeah. Web3 and crypto? Yeah, so when I started working, I started working for Samsung Electronics, uh, C++. I did that when I was finishing my master's in computer science. Worked there for probably four years and then moved into finance. Worked in finance in London and New York, building trading systems. And then in Chicago, uh, most recently at Citadel probably are familiar since the incidents last year but before that when I, I started there like six years ago at the time I think nobody knew what Citadel is now everybody's heard of it <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> were you always kind of interested in, in development like even at a young age yeah so my first computer was this old Schneider thing from Germany it had like basic on it 0.9 inch floppy disk. Uh, I don't know. I was playing with it when I was like, I don't know, six, seven, something like that. I don't know. Went down the hill from there. <laughs> so you have a story similar to uh, Jordan. He, his is carrying around the Java book in school. <laughs> I never really did Java that much. Yeah. I was doing mostly C++, but I had a C++ book with me in school. Did you? Sometimes, yeah. Were, were you cool in school? No, I'm not cool now. <laughs> so, never. Uh, no, no, not really. <laughs> so what do you primarily do at Solana? So I have a small team, and everyone on the team, including myself, is focused on building reference implementations of potential interesting protocols. So let's say someone... Uh, writes a paper like Dave White from Paradigm uh, and we read the paper, think about it, can it be implemented on Solana, how would it work, uh, how would we do it and then we do it and uh, open source it uh, for others to use. Uh, that's one portion of the job. The other one is like bootstrapping potentially protocols and helping companies, partners with Solana Labs or big brand names to, to build on Solana and then the third one is organizing this hacker houses and boot camps. Uh, for smaller participants and startups to, to build with us together. And I think it has been quite fun. Yeah, these hacker houses have been going great. It seems yeah. to be pretty productive. and Yeah, I think most of the time people, when people think about them, they think it's a lot of parties, but I think people are actually more productive here than often they are at home. Even though we have the party lighting, I think people get into the focus mode. Uh, quite frequently. With COVID still being around after two years, uh, it's, I think, a great opportunity for people to, to meet. We had multiple teams that started working remotely during the hackathons, and hacker houses were the first places where they met each other in person. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, these teams who have been working for a while together, and now they're just meeting. Yeah, it's great. And, and boot camps are similar, similarly break for experience, I think, uh, for people that are never heard of Solana, are starting to realize that this might be the thing that they want to do. What brought you on to Solana? I was just bored at home. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I 
That was a little anti-climatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, this, the story there is I left Citadel. Uh, I was about to work for jump trading, but when you leave uh, like hedge fund or prop trading firm, often you have this like non competes in place mm -hmm. that prevent you from working for competitors. So Citadel and Jump trading are definitely competitors. So I was about to sit at home and do nothing for like a year. Waiting for the yeah. lapse. <laughs> yeah. In finance, usually you still get paid. Uh, you just cannot work. So for a few weeks, you know, and it was COVID. So normally when it wasn't COVID, People like travel and it's kind of fun with COVID. I mean, that was kind of out of the question with all the restrictions. And I think it's still kind of tricky. So I was, I don't know, baking bread, <laughs> kombucha. <laughs> Apparently I make fairly good sourdough. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I would like add bacon, seeds and stuff. Yeah. I heard uh, you were eating a lot at uh, your favorite restaurant we ate there last night. Roca. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that place. I first tried it in London. It started... I think in London and Hong Kong. And then uh, the ones in Chicago, they are like a separate uh, branch of it. Yeah, that was my first time in there. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> I was sitting at home three weeks doing nothing other than, you know, just chilling. Uh, and it was just too much. So I started sitting on Twitter more and more. I figured I want to play a bit more with uh, some layer ones. And the primary reason for that at the time, Citadel was not interested at all in crypto. So it was fairly straight conversation about like, yeah, that's not competitive, especially if you're doing open source. Reach out to Anatoly for some common friends. Uh, we chatted a bit and I started working on this. And then after roughly six months, um, I kind of liked it. And I reached out to people at Jump Trading and told them I don't think I will be coming. So they were upset, but you know, <laughs> that's just life. Yeah. Um, so was that around the same time as, as Jordan? It was It was <clears throat> fairly close. Like I started probably eight months before him Okay. In, in total. So fairly close. We worked together at Citadel as well. Oh, okay. So you've known him for a while. Yeah, we actually met each other uh, during first day of business school. Oh, okay. Um, so we both went to Booth in Chicago during this like boarding, like uh, MBAs. They do this uh, like orientation that lasts like, I don't know, a week or so. For some reason, I was like already sitting in class and he sat next to me. And I was like, what are you doing? Uh, and he was like, oh yeah, I'm like a software engineer. I'm like, ah, I really don't like software engineers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he liked it. <laughs> so you told him, I yeah. don't like software engineering. <laughs> yeah. And to think, now you guys are like B and J. <laughs> yeah. One of the reasons I went really to, to business school was I to meet other people. And then yeah. it felt like oh, another software engineer. I have those, <laughs> enough of those at work. <laughs> and being myself, I wanted to push myself out of the bubble. Yeah, that's funny. This episode is brought to you by Neverland. And no, we're not talking about the California ranch. You're probably wondering, aren't you a founder? Yes, I am, and I'm not here to bullshit you. Along with my two cousins, Mark and Kurt, our partners, Rob and Evan, and the world-famous West Coast Customs, yes, the guys behind Fit My Ride, we're building a car customization, collecting, and racing game on the blockchain called the Empire App. Empire App will sit in the Neverland world, along with the Meta Whips and the Meta Racer minigame, the Crypto Dad Dadlands mower racing game, and the ever-expanding metaverse that's going to continue to grow. You can find out more by visiting www.neverland.io. That's www.nvrland.io. Let's get back into the episode. Um, tell me about the B&J brand. Like, did you, did you guys expect it to turn into a brand of its own? Uh, no, I think it was mostly an accident. Yeah. Was, you know, I was sitting in the office. At some point, I, I think it first started, like, maybe somewhere on Twitter, and it was accidental mostly. And then we first used, I think, the logo where we did the loot derivative drop on Solana to, to fund charity in Chicago. Yeah. And then now it's like, it has life on its own. Yeah. I mean, now, now there's some merch coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. Yeah, it should be fun. Uh, we have a couple of ideas where we can take it, both from the engineering perspective and uh, like brand engagement. Yeah. So it should be fun. Yeah. I think we'll, we'll be seeing some samples tonight, I hope. Yeah, I, I hope so too. I'm quite <laughs> excited. I hope we can go crazy. Where's the Hacker House going? What's the plan with... The Hacker House is... 
from the strategy in terms of in real events, I think are extra, at least for me extremely important for this year. Mm. So I really want to have probably thirty, maybe forty different events. Forty? Yeah. Four zero? Yeah. Holy smokes. Um in different cities. I mean, even if you look at the lineup of what we have. You're saying 40 in this year alone? I mean, we didn't plan everything yet. Yeah. Uh, but for February and March, we pretty have one every week. Um, so you're ever going to see your own home? That's that's the sad part. <laughs> yeah. I hope other folks in the teams will start getting more involved. Yeah. But what do you have right after Chicago? So originally, we were planning to have Park City uh, mm -hmm. during Sundance Festival, but Sundance went virtual, so we decided... You know, Park City is kind of a sad place uh, most of the time. <laughs> Even though Jordan was just stuck there for <laughs> a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's cool if you're skiing, but yeah, like, yeah. other than that, it's like, it's a single street. Yeah. Yeah. Not much else going on. Yeah. Better than Salt Lake City. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> so we are not doing that one, but there is Mount Dawa in Salt Lake City. So oh, okay. whoever is thinking of skiing and want to work, they should definitely check Mount Dawa on Twitter. Uh, folks that are organizing are great. I think Project Serum is sponsoring that. But what we are doing next is um, an activation, like large scale activation that I'm thinking of, like really starting the year of the hacker houses. Um, we'll have first one in LA, first week of February, then the second week is Seattle, then we are going to Singapore, then Moscow, and then Prague. And I'm hoping to organize another one, which we didn't start planning it yet, uh, in New York for boot camp and Hacker House as well for this would be second and third week of March. When I tell people I'm going to the Hacker House, they're like, what is that? Can you break it down? Yeah, I mean, in the simplest form, it's really just uh, a place with monitors and desks where people from Solana ecosystem or blockchain in general just, just come meet each other and work together. So like a pop-up we work. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually probably the simplest way to explain it. Yeah. <laughs> what about the occasionally there's like bounties when you explain those? Sometimes there are companies that want something solved. I think Lisbon was a perfect example of yeah. that, where Brian from RPC Pool wanted a couple of things in the validator code uh, for running the RPC infrastructure. He said, hey, there's a bounty for like 50K. Who can solve it this week? Uh, we'll review it and, and reward it to them. Or Folks from Hero Network wanted a staking contract, and sometimes there are people that are engineers and show up, but they are not necessarily associated with the current project, and they look at those bounties and just do them. I think during this week we didn't necessarily pause them on the whiteboard, but there were folks that were asking about bounties from Project Zero. That essentially like also what hackathons are, is it just it gives people the opportunity to... Hackathons are somewhat related to hacker houses. I think we'll maintain what we did last year, where all the hackathons that we did were longer events that are virtual, that let people like just work from wherever they want. Right. Usually they are four to six weeks long. I hope we'll have basically hacker houses throughout the hackathons where teams can plan for being in certain location, maybe meet together, discuss the architecture and just increase, like improve the quality of projects from the hackathon. That's not to think that the previous hackathons had low quality. I think right, the yeah. quality from hackathons was really high. Uh, most of the winners from all the hackathons started companies that got funded. And most of the brands that you see in Solana were built during the hackathon. Like Mango, for example, is a perfect example yeah. where they, they won one of the hackathons. I think second one, they built a bunch of other protocols uh, and the team is really strong. Not only is there all this working, but there's a little massage room right over there too. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know, uh, only a back massage. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, There's glass windows. <laughs> yeah. People work hard. Yeah. Uh, I think this opens around like 7 a.m. and finishes around 9. I mean, some people are here till like 4 in the morning. Uh, like Yeah. Building is trying to kick us out due to COVID restrictions. But yeah, I, I think there will be... I, Lisbon and Miami was a perfect example. If we have it open 24-7, there will be people that are working 24-7, yeah. making sure that their companies are successful and put stuff properly. And so far, we are managed to maintain the tradition that each time when we have this, there's multiple teams actually releasing their products on mainnet. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, like Burn Finance, I think that... Uh, They're right now. Week, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was supposed to meet, meet with Burn. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, I'm always proud when teams push themselves to release to make that it's a it's a big step do you collect nfts sure i guess i'm fine arts collector yeah <laughs> i guess mainly solana do you do multi-chain do you have any um so i have some on eth not many yeah i guess the 
you know, I wish I bought more uh, on Ethereum, I guess from the financial gain perspective. Yeah. But yeah, I have, I don't know, maybe 500 on Solana, different ones. Yeah. So not, not a lot. But. I've been asking everybody, what is the last NFT you purchased? Uh, I did something last week, I think. That sounded regretful. I did something last week. <laughs> uh, no, I'm trying to think what... I know I got recently a bunch of fractals because I did it on the secondary. Yeah. Uh, from the Justin Khan startup, Fractal. I know I have a couple of baby apes that I acquired recently. I'm super excited about the flowers, soul flowers. The soul team, flowers? Yeah, the team is really strong. Uh, Build destroys in LA. Hopefully he will stop by the hacker house that we are planning there. Cool. He used to be like a graffiti artist. I have like the OG flowers. Cool. I really like the art there. And 3D flowers, I think, are cool. Are those out already? Or yeah, they are all yeah, they're all out. From the minting, I'm trying to think what did I mint. I did I, I minted the the flames, flames. infinity flames or I haven't seen infinity that flames. That was like <coughs> three weeks ago or two weeks. I don't know. It's all a blur. Yeah, <laughs> it's I mean, crypto, right? <laughs> yeah, for, for me, it's like uh, always a impulsive purchase. <laughs> so it's bad. I'm a, I'm a bad person. <laughs> DJ, I think, is what they call it, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, anything you're looking forward to in the space? When I think about this year uh, for Solana, the most important thing, I think, for the whole network will be just user growth. I think last year we really focused about growing the developer ecosystem. If you look at the Electric Capital report, uh, we started relatively small. Uh, I think there was like... You know, on the report when the time at the time when they ran it, uh, there was maybe like fifty active developers. This year, we I think hit around a thousand wow. full-time engineers working on Solana, or maybe it was like two fifty, and we hit like it was two fifty last year. We hit a thousand this year, so forex growth. Uh, I hope will maintain that growth for this year. And that's why the hacker houses and the hackathons. And with that, there will be also a user growth when the protocols that were built last year start acquiring more users. I think that was one thing for me uh, in Lisbon at Breakpoint was uh, actually seeing how many people are building something or working on it within the Solana ecosystem. And it was kind of like, holy shit. You know, so many of them are just starting, which means like, uh, it's going to explode very soon. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I, I, hopefully we'll As have it. a lot of lo users yeah. uh, and a lot of products being built. A lot of them will go live from the hacker houses. Yeah. <laughs> what makes Solana a great network in your... Um, I think the, the vibes, <coughs> I guess. Purple color. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, it's just everyone is so friendly. You show up at these hacker houses and people really want you to be successful. I think it's a community that has been growing quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, that's welcoming <coughs> everyone with open hands. Uh, and will help you be successful. And it's just fun. Uh, I think like everyone here feels like a family. Like no one will tell you, oh, like this is stupid. Uh, you shouldn't do it. Right. Yeah. Uh, again, going back to Lisbon and I've been at the Miami and this one, and, like it, it seems everybody is very willing to work together and help each other out. And it's, it's been besides the technology side, the community itself is just. Yep. I mean, like I could talk about the technology, like yeah. this great blockchain, single state machine that has a vision that will not have sharding. It's like fast, low fees, environment friendly. A lot of those arguments you'll hear from other blockchain developers. Where can people find you on socials? B.Sol, I guess on Twitter. I think it's mostly Twitter. I don't think I have Instagram, really. <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> or TikTok. I definitely don't have TikTok. I'm waiting to see a, a, a Bartage TikTok dance. Oh, no. no, no. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a good idea for a next bet with Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it first <laughs> yeah. yeah next bet yeah contact us where you think we should be doing the hacker houses I, I, my DMs on Twitter are always open you can always reach out to Jordan as well so we can build the communities together awesome man well thanks for your time I'm glad it took a few times trying to get this uh, lined up and I'm glad we were able to do it yeah thanks a lot I appreciate it man alright thanks <laughs>